time. It's time. And now, it's time for Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you for joining us, all of you good-looking right. people. <laughs> How are you? You know, this year, the person I'm about to interview, this is my highlight. Yes, you love this guy, don't you? He, I mean, I pray for him often. And I see him on TV, Fox every once in a while, or other programs, and Orlando Magic, especially when you hear about them. Uh, I think of I mean, there's always all kinds of triggers that I think of my buddy. Yeah. And we have the privilege of having the man that has written 80 books. <laughs> I don't really think he needs to be introduced anymore. He's a friend of the program. I know. Well, just, just Pat Williams is his just name. Just read a little bit about him. Senior Vice President of the NBA's Orlando Magic. Motivational speaker. Exactly. Uh, parents of 19 children. 14 uh, adopted. Host of three radio programs. Yeah. Sunday school teacher. What? I know. It's got all these things. I just. Meet it in 58 marathons. And his latest book right here. This is what he's noted for. Is, is this number writing. 80? Yes. Wow. Wow. He's and noted by, for his And by the writing. way, he has a very famous daughter. Yes, she, yeah, that's right. And she is, does she live in Nashville? Yes, mm -hmm, she's there. And We and had I, her on. Yeah, I've seen her on yeah. uh, uh, some of the Nashville programs mm -hmm. out of Nashville. And she's a you know, great singer. I mean, does she get that from who in the family? Not me. Okay. Not me, it came from the other side, believe yeah, me. Really? Yeah, really. Well, let's have an update on how you're doing, because I know I'm feeling, well, Sharon, thanks for asking. I was diagnosed uh, two years ago with multiple myeloma, mm -hmm. which I'd never heard of multiple at that point. Multiple myeloma. It's, it's cancer of the bone marrow, basically. That's the best way to describe it. It's one of the blood cancers in the leukemia, lymphoma world. Right. And I was diagnosed two years ago. Uh, obviously, that's a shocking piece oh, of news yeah. when you get it. Uh, but I've uh, come a long way. Uh, I've, I, I've told the doctors I, I will do everything you tell me, and I have. So new medi the good news is new medication is coming. Wow. Uh, the researchers and the scientists out there are doing a great job. And as this new chemo or new oral medication comes, you know, they get me on it. And I'm, I'm responding well to the treatment. I feel well, good. My energy great. levels I've, good. I've, I've got to say, mm -hmm. the last time he was here, you look marvelous mm -hmm. yeah I mean it's it, it, isn't it amazing what God can do I mean this is answered prayer well thank so, you Lord for answering my prayer that was a discussion we had Herman about how to handle this publicly yes. two years ago we decided to go ahead and call the media together and just tell them yep. what was going on and one of the one of the people Christian friends had said the only way you're going to mobilize prayer support is right. to you get this out and just exactly. tell people amen so there have been many, many, many people praying for me, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. You have met presidents, heads of companies, uh, and I mean, you've, you've been as famous as the people you meet, but I mean, you, you have influenced so many people, been around so many dignitaries, and in fact, this comment from the inside cover, what will you do with the influence you have? Now, I've got to tell you something because, uh, you know, many times I interview people, authors of books, and I always, this just goes through my head, are they doing what their book says? Mm. This guy, many years ago, I, I mentioned a friend of mine, he had a boy's ranch in uh, Washington, Leavenworth, Washington, mm -hmm. uh, Alpine Boys Ranch at that time, and I mentioned th th this friend, you know, coming up with a birthday or whatever, this guy calls him. That's right. This guy. I mean, you know, just a low profile guy calls him. And but I mean you and, and in your book, this book, you've got to get it. You bring to mind the stories of people, high profile people, uh, that have that what you have, that ability to never think they're somebody, but to realize their influence could change the direction of somebody you're talking to. 
Yeah, that's a great point, Herman. <clears throat> and really, here, here's what triggered this book. After that press conference when we announced my situation. In fact, your whole story is on page 17 when you get your book. Yeah, I got letters and emails and cards. I mean, really, I'm a huge number uh, from people who probably were writing me that they would normally write my wife after I died. You know, with all these wow. memories. Wow. I got to read them wow. in advance of my death. Wow. So, uh, and I was amazed. They, they would re recite a story of some incident way back or some something I might have said or a, a letter I might have written them 40 years ago or a note and, and I thought, oh my goodness, I, I had no memory of this, Herman. You know, it didn't, I just didn't remember most of these incidents. And, and, and his comments, and it's in the book, his comments that you, you know, would make to them. Yeah. And 10 years later, they're coming oh. in contact with you Telling and me saying we, that that comment yeah. molded their life <laughs> today. Yeah, and it, and it just, I had no clue. And so this book really is about deliberate influence. Wow. That every one of and you don't have to be a great sports star, you don't have to be a Hollywood movie beauty, you do not have to be a political figure of note. Uh, you, in your world, are, are reaching people by the words you say, the actions you take, the little things you do, it's leaving an imprint forever, ever. Yeah. And, and boy, that's oh. a, that was a wake up call to me and I just wanted to spread the word to others. Oh, but, but, but I, I just wanted you to know that he lives this. I mean, it's not like, I write a book, I like all these comments, but you live this and you, you say, uh, pay it forward. What does that mean? Pay it forward. Well, I think what we're really doing, Herman, we're investing in people uh, on a daily basis. Our staff, our children, our grandchildren, we're investing in them so that in the years ahead, uh, they will have a better opportunity, a better life. And, and what has happened since I wrote the book, Herman, uh, now I am acutely aware of the influence. Every time I sign a book or write to somebody a note or leave a voicemail. Wow. Boy, I'm really thinking yes. about, <laughs> you know, the influence that little piece, you know, might have in their life. Mm -hmm. uh, I did it in the past, but I wasn't as conscious. Yeah. And so I think that's the message I really want to s spread and well, to share here. What is amazing, and it's not just because it's me, because he's, he's that kind of guy, I, I will call him and, you know, there can't be anybody more busy than this guy. I mean, it's amazing what you've gone through me uh, physically and you've, you've stayed on schedule. I mean, it's amazing what you can do uh, just saying, you know, I have to do this. This is part of my life and I'm gonna keep going. Mm -hmm. But he will call you, he will call me back and I'm going, excuse me, it says, Pat Williams, are you kidding me? Because, you know, I, I, I always preface, but you don't have to call me back. I just praying for you. And I mean, but what gave you that whatever that is, that DNA, what, what you do that's just natural? Well, I was greatly influenced, Herman, early in my sports career by the late Bill Veck, the great baseball Hall of Fame promoter, the master of uh, drawing people. Uh, he's in the Hall of Fame. He, he wrote his book in 1962. It's called Veck is in Wreck. Wow. And I read it. I was just starting my baseball career then as a 22-year-old. That book had a huge influence on me, and I wanted to meet Bill Veck and I was able to, and for 25 years, he became a real friend and a mentor and an influence in my life. But as he, he, bottom line with Bill Veck, and he wrote about this, uh, he answered his own phones. You know, he didn't, you didn't go through a battery of three secretaries. Uh, he answered all his mail. Uh, he stood at the gates after the games were over and shook hands with the people as they were leaving. Uh, he would sit among the fans from time to time. Uh, he'd come and speak at your Rotary Club the next day at lunch. I mean, that's how he did it. And, and I bought in real quick. And to this day, 50 some years later, you know, I still follow that VEC formula. And uh, it's just part of my mm -hmm. DNA. Works. And I, I think sports fans, you know, I've, I'm, I'm doing that to touch them and influence them. Do you, and, do you tell these huge paid players, visibility, the whole thing. Do you, do you share that with them, that, that they need to sign the autographs? Yeah, I do the best, very best that I can. 
uh, you know, they've got their own mind and some are better than others. But yes, that when athletes do that, when they will take the time to sign an autograph for a kid, uh, listen, they'll never forget it. And Herman, I remember uh, as a kid, I loved baseball and hanging around the ballpark in Philadelphia, uh, getting Ted Williams' autograph or Stan Musial's autograph. I was able to do it. And uh, whew, and I remember every detail. To this day, I was probably 12, maybe 13. Do you remember the ones that said no uh, autograph? A, a few of them happened, Herman. A few of them hap happened, and that left a wound. Mm -hmm. It left a wound. Now, now I, I can understand if the ball player's in a hurry and he's got to yeah. go in. You know, things happen, but... Um, and sometimes you just can't meet all the demands. But if you handle it in a pleasant way, kids, I'm so sorry I can't sign. I've got to get dressed. I'm, I'm in a hurry. Uh, meet me after the game. Now, now, he may, you know, it may never happen. Yeah. But you know, with, with that, you you have a nice feeling about that ball player. Mm -hmm. Was it Barkley? That yeah, you know, we're not role models. Yeah. You know, your yeah. parents are yeah. role models. Yeah. But I would argue with Charles on that. Yeah, we we need good parents, and I do a chapter you know, on parents and, and the influence they have. But uh, when you're in the public light, Herman, you are an influencer, you whether, you, whether you like it or not. So yeah. that's why people should read your book? Is it, does it teach you how to be an influence? Oh, or? No, mo most definitely. Yes. Yes. Really? You know, I do a, sec a chapter on children. We do a chapter on, you know, uh, marriage. We do a chapter in the workplace. Yeah. All designed, uh, Sharon, to really get us alert and attuned to the words we say, the actions we take, the notes we send. I'll tell you who has also has had a profound impact on me is Rich DeVos. Uh, he's the co-founder of the Amway organization mm -hmm. and he and his family have owned the magic since well over 20 years now. Yeah. Rich is 86, still hanging in there. He's and on, did he have a heart transplant? Uh, about 10, 12 years ago. And mm -hmm. He's gotten to 86. He's in a wheelchair now, but his mind is sharp. Anyway, Rich has often asked his role with Amway, which is now a $13 billion worldwide company. Uh, he says, I'm the head cheerleader. And for 50 plus years, that's, he's just been traveling around the world cheering people on. And, and, and he's a note writer, handwritten little notes. And he always ends them the same way. Love ya, Rich. Oh my goodness. And I've got... I've got four of them framed, and and I often think the thousands of those little notes around the world that are framed, uh, <laughs> and, and there's something about a note that comes in the mail, Sharon, yes. oh, yeah. that beats email, yes. mm -hmm. oh, you better or it beats it. a voicemail. Oh personal. boy, a handwritten yeah. note. And you gotta put a stamp on it. You know, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, recently I sent a book to Mike Krzyzewski, the basketball coach at Duke, the winningest coach in college basketball history. I sent him a book, signed it, he wrote me a handwritten note back on a, on a card, you know, just thanking me for it with wow. some kind words and just signed it, Mike. I, I'll frame that one. I'm, I'll frame <laughs> it. Yeah, he will. Uh, Art DeMoss, is that, is that right? Art? Arthur DeMoss. Arthur DeMoss. Never now, will now it. you have a story in here. Yeah. And, and boy, I read it, read it again because it's powerful. Can you share that? Hey, Art DeMoss was an insurance executive in Philadelphia. But before that, it's what he, oh, blew me away. He was, a, oh, he he was, was a, a bookie. He was a bookie. No, te no telling what he got into. Yeah. And then he yeah. came to Christ yes. and had a dramatic conversion. Mm -hmm. uh, he was kind of a rough, a rough edge guy, but... You knew him? Oh, I knew him well. He lived in Philadelphia. I was with the 76ers in that period. And now, he, what did you do with the 76ers? I was the GM of the Sixers. I mean, that's so the life he, he lived. I was there for 12 years, yeah. but, but uh, the, uh, Art was a... Was a absolutely outspoken evangelist. Oh, I've never been around anybody like him. Well, you said in his huge, Passion for he eventually went into the insurance business yeah, I and did. a mega company. That's right. And he had this huge home yes. and they would have as many as 200 in his home. For dinner. But he would have them there and they would go, he would say, okay, I want, give me your testimony. And they would go around giving testimonies or whatever. And this one guy uh, said, I don't have a testimony. And Art says, can, can you come with me just a while? So he takes him in one of his bedrooms. When he comes back out, he says, tell him your testimony. <laughs> he led him to Christ. Right there, yeah. But he, he passed away on a tennis court. You know, he was throwing yeah. the ball up, serving, and, and collapsed, and that was his last breath. In fact, the doctor you said in the book, he said he was dead before the ball hit the court. Hit the ground. Right, body so his, so his, his funeral service was, was an unbelievable, it was packed. Bill Bright, Campus Crusade founder, who was a dear friend of ours, was yeah. there. 
And he just said, uh, how many people in the room here today came to Christ under Art's influence? And about, I don't know how many people were there, th two or three thousand. Half, half the service put their hands Can up. Can you believe this? You know, half the group yeah. put their hands up. And, and so you talk about influence. Oh, my goodness. Well, well, he helped, that's why when I read that, I go, wow. He helped Jerry Falwell start the yes, Liberty College. Yes, he did. College. Yes. You Very mean, generous. He, yes. You know, he, he, he gave... We'll, we'll never know. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. His uh, children are doing very well. Nancy DeMoss is a best-selling author. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's wonderful. Uh, he's got a son who's in the middle of everything. Oh, I know. I yes, know he, he is. Mark, Mark DeMoss. Yeah. You see him quoted all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. So his children have carried on beautifully. Yes. And um, I, Art was a dear friend. Wow. And, and I never will forget, we got word that he had died. My wife and I drove over there quickly to their home. And I remember walking in. Their children were young. And uh, I saw Nancy, the, the daughter, and I gave her a big hug, and I said, how are you doing? And she said, pretty rejoicing. Wow. Pretty rejoicing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, sadness, deep yes. sadness, but they knew their, where their dad was. Absolutely. Sure. Pretty rejoicing. I've thought of that quote many mm -hmm. times. Speaking of Bill Bright. You're the guy responsible for him leaving California and coming to Orlando. Well, we formed a committee. We had just gotten the magic in place, and Bill was searching to come east. He was really trying to decide between Charlotte and Orlando. Oh. And, and we pulled a committee together of some major realtors, major hitters in, Chicago, in Orlando, and collectively we con convinced Bill to move. And he did, and boy, that was... 20 years yes, ago, yes. and they've, they've got an incredible facility over there, Campus Crusade. Mm -hmm. uh, How does it feel? His uh, wife is still doing well. Vonette is yes, still... Yes, I know. I yeah. just saw it in NRB last year. Still traveling, yes, and yes. she's um, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, How does it feel to have that kind of influence? I mean, suggesting to Bill Bright, you might want to move your whole organization <laughs> to Orlando. Yeah. I mean, that's power. I remember saying to him, I said, Bill, there's nothing like going into your backyard and pulling some fresh oranges through the winter and squeezing them. I said, what a great way to start the day. I said, you can't do that in Charlotte. I mean, we, wow. we were, That's pretty and good. And I came to Christ under, under crusade. You mm. know, a young lady in a singing group in Spartanburg, South Carolina. That's right. it's in the book. Yeah, mm -hmm. she gave me a, a, a Four Spiritual Laws booklet. Wow. Yeah, listen to this, though. Which I still use as, as my best track. I mean, I think it's the best yes, track there is. Yeah. And, isn't God amazing? He takes that four spiritual laws, puts it in his pocket, he lays down, and it's poking him <laughs> when he lays down. And he reaches back there and pulls this out, and it's going, okay, I'll read it. So you read it. You know, it had a huge effect on me. And then I called this girl that night with the singing group and uh, said, can we have breakfast tomorrow? I said, I need you to really explain this booklet to me. And she did, patiently, wow. and walked me through it. And at the end of it, I, I said, and she was off. The, the bus was leaving at 10. She was gone, just gone. And, uh, but I went to see my, the owner of our team who'd been praying for me, Mr. Little John, dear godly man. He was the owner of the baseball team. And he had been praying for me for four years. Amazing. And, uh, and finally, he just said, go ahead and make that decision. It's your time. Just think and, of the reward oh, she's oh, got waiting for man, her in heaven. Oh, man, <laughs> uh, So I took off like a scalded goose. I mean, I was walking one way one minute, and the next thing I know, I'm heading down another, another path. Breath. It was kind of That's great. an Apostle Paul experience for me. Wow. Uh, that, I, I've, I've got all my little notes tagged here, and we just don't have time. I mean, uh, t tell the story about Grant Hill. Uh, uh, thanks for your comment five years earlier. He's an Eagle, Eagles coach, uh, listening to your radio program. Yeah, that's Andy Reid. Let me, let me tell you the Grant Hill story. He, he was a phenomenal player at Duke, came out and was drafted very high by uh, Detroit. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I knew who he was, and I knew his kind of kid he was. So one night, they're standing in line, coming out of the locker room, ready to head out onto the court. And I just was, I was over that way for some reason, and I went up to Grant. I never had met him. And I just said, Grant, you're going to have an enormous impact in this league. You know, the kind of guy that you are. And I said, you, you can really be a difference maker. Wow. Something like that. Yeah. And then they headed out. And, and then five years later, yeah, five we years. ended up signing Grant, you know, as a free agent. Isn't that amazing? And darn if he didn't remember that. 
Uh-huh. You know, he, he mentioned that to me. He said, I remember you came up to me when I was a rookie and Goodness. said that. And Grant is now in his 18th year but in he, the league. He, he got wow. hurt. I mean, he, he, oh, he, he got we, hurt real bad. We got him, and he had a horrible ankle injury yeah. and infection, and he missed huge He could have chunks. died from that infection. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, wow. He missed huge chunks of his time with us, and it was a disappointment for all of us. But he went on to Phoenix and continued to play, wow. and now he's in his last year in the league with the Clippers, but a, but a marvelous guy. And he he's going to have a great, great 40 next year, so you're going to hear more about Grant Hill. This guy also plays golf. I mean, he's everything. And so he was at this big tournament, and guess who was standing over here watching him uh, make this, you know, when you stand up and you address the ball? Yes, you address the ball. And Hello, ball. He takes, he takes a swing, and it goes straight down the fairway. Par three, and I, I'm not a good golfer, yeah. but I and, plunked it right down there. And the it guy, was Michael Jordan. Yes, the guy watching, he says, hey, Pat. <laughs> it's easy to see that you don't spend much time at the office because <laughs> he's looking at these. It, 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 yeah. But that was a fluke, wasn't it? Oh, I was nervous to death. Yeah. I mean, he, our, M Michael was in the foursome behind us, and they were stacked up a little bit, and so and there's media all over the place with Michael sure. cameras, and and I'm shaking like a leaf, and somehow hit this ball. It, it, I mean, it's literally that far from the pin. Oh, <laughs> and then I blew the putt. Oh no! Nobody's watching. I'm down there. We go down, and I blew the putt. I was watching. Could, could have been a. Could have been a. Yeah. I was watching Tiger yesterday, and yeah. and, and a guy with that caliber can blow a putt. <laughs> they all can. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. You go. You, you you know, it's not. You know, it's it's a foot, and it'll. I mean, it's amazing. Golf is a crazy game, but you say in the book, I wanted to be more like Coach Wooden. Well, John Wooden had an enormous influence on me, as he did on. Thousands, mm -hmm. countless thousands. The great UCLA coach had a record yeah. there that'll never be broken. But I think Coach Wooden's greatest years were from his retirement at age 65 till his death at 99. And I had a book idea, how to be like Coach Wooden, that I wanted to write. And I wrote him a letter uh, asking him to bless the project. That's all I needed. And a few days later, he called. The phone rang, and I picked it up. He said, "Mr. Williams." He said, "This is John Wooden." Oh my goodness. The former basketball coach at UCLA, like I thought, and yeah. I thought to myself, I do know who you are, sir. <laughs> and uh, he said, I'm not worthy of something like this, but if you would like to do it, he said, you go on ahead. And so that opened the door, and I ended up becoming acquaintance and, and a friendship developed. Uh, he would be then probably hitting 90. Sharp? Wow. Uh, he, oh, sharp until his last breath at 99, Herman. And I ended up writing two books about Coach Wooden, How to Be Like Coach Wooden, and then another one about the seven principles that his dad planted in his life as oh a kid. Oh, goodness mm -hmm. gracious. And uh, Coach Wooden still impacts us today. You know, we'll, we'll long remember and always be reading his books and following his advice, yeah. like failing to prepare is preparing to fail, or be quick, but don't hurry. I mean, he was, he was incredible. In fact, after retired, uh, uh, he said, I miss teaching the young men the most. Love That's what he missed the most. He loved practices. Loved, he was a teacher at heart, and I can still hear him, uh, you know, when everybody w would refer to him as a coach, he would say, no, I'm a teacher. Uh, I was teaching these young men under my supervision. That's how he would talk. Wow. You know, how to be basketball players, yes, but more importantly, how to be good citizens and good contributors, and that, that's, that was Coach Wooden. <laughs> I, I got to tell you this real quick, and it's in a, but, but this is throughout the book, so I'm just cherry picking. Uh, you, you say, who are you when no one is looking? Ray Charles and a limo driver, he asked about his family, and he told Ray Charles, I have a blind brother. He wanted his number and his address. Now you would say, yeah, Ray Charles was his number. He visited his brother <laughs> when he was in that city to do a concert. I mean, you go, wow. now, I'm just guessing there's not many ministers, <laughs> evangelists, that would pull that off. Mm. But here is, here is just an entertainer. That's your DNA. Well, I, in my travels, 
Herman and, and speaking engagement, sometimes the host will have a limo for me, and I'm always humbled yes, by that. Yeah. And, but I found that these limo drivers, boy, do they have a wealth of stories because they are driving yeah. prominent people, yeah. primarily. So I will always ask them, uh, who are the three most memorable people you've had in your, in your limo? Good for you. Many times they'll say, we're not allowed to talk about that. But mm -hmm. sometimes they will. And so this one limo driver told me this Ray Charles story. And, he's, wow. and, and the limo driver had a blind brother uh, in Pittsburgh somewhere. Yes. And, and, uh, yes. and Ray said, well, I'm going to be there. And he said, what's your brother's name? And, and he got there and drove over to the house wow. where the blind brother was. Now, can you imagine Ray Charles knocking oh. on your door? <laughs> I can't even. what uh, I say? I mean, he's probably in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. what I say? This is the, the last comment in his book. You've got to get the book. Please. You, you will love it. The difference you make tomorrow begins with the decisions you make today. Mm -hmm. Share Christ with somebody watching. Well, I would just simply say that you may have everything in the world as far as material goods. You may have everything going in your career with your children. Uh, but I guarantee you, if you really study your life, there's an emptiness there. It was the case in my life. I was an up-and-outer. Everything was going beautifully for me, but I was frustrated because I thought there has to be more. And in that position in my life, um, I was confronted very, very boldly through a number of circumstances with this gospel of Jesus Christ. And I, I was so amazed that it was not all that complicated. Mm -hmm. God loves you as you're watching today. He has a plan for your life. The problem that cuts us off from that plan is an evil old thing called sin, and we all have sin in our life. However, God knew about that. He was not surprised by sin, and he sent Jesus into this world to teach us and lead us and be a moral example, but primarily to die for us so that those sins could be forgiven and forgotten. And all we have to do is by simple childlike faith just say, Lord, that's good enough for me. Uh, I accept this gift that you've given me. Uh, I want my sins forgiven, and by faith I'm inviting Christ to come into my life, to take up residence in my heart through his Holy Spirit, and uh, live my life the rest of the, my days on earth in a way that honors you. Two things come with that decision, an abundant life, which Jesus promised here on this earth, and secondly, an eternal life. Amen. And Herman, I've been thinking an awful lot about eternal life yeah. when yeah. this cancer diagnosis was made. and. Mm -hmm. The good news is we don't have to fear death, that we're headed for heaven in a lifetime in eternity. It's going to be marvelous. Amen. When, uh, and all you have to do, you can't earn it, you can't work for yes. it. It comes when you make that decision to be a follower of Christ. Follow him today. What, what an opportunity for you. And if you trust Christ as your Savior today, just as he said, absent from the body, present with the Lord Jesus Christ. Bye-bye. Invited to tune in each week to The Good Life, hosted by CTN founder and president Bob and Jane DeAndre. This program features inspirational and informative interviews, anointed music, and special reports. Don't miss The Good Life, Friday nights at 9 p.m. and Monday mornings at 3 a.m. Eastern Time, here on the Christian Television Network. Millions of people live in spiritual darkness without hope. The My Hope World Television Project is mobilizing millions of Christians to share the gospel in their homes using local language television broadcasts as a tool for personal evangelism. The My Hope Project has already helped more than 6 million people make a decision for Jesus Christ. For more information, please call 1-800-961-6796 or visit billygraham.org slash TV. Watch Life Today, weekdays as James and Betty Robison provide real answers to real problems through compelling guests and miraculous testimonies. Witness God's love through inspiration, hope, and life. Join us in making a real difference in our world by changing countless lives and building stronger families. 
Don't miss Life Today with James and Betty Robison. Weekdays on this station. How can a known poison that exists in our food supply or medication